Inflation. Not just in real life, but it also happens in game, when more gold is being introduced than is being taken out of the game, be it from raw GP drops or those bot farms alking and selling items to shops. But to combat it, there are many many ways that Jagex opts to remove gold from the game. Repairing of broken items, buying of expensive items for construction, previously we had the jewel arena, and then, well then there's deaths. So it's been almost one year since the release of Tombs of Amasca, and during that time, it's safe to say I've died a few times. So much so that my death's coffer has drained from over 100 million gold to zero in just one year. But with updates and releases like Desert Treasure 2 just around the corner comes great opportunity. Not just directly from those fat day one drops, but also from opportunities in the market to top up our death's coffers. So, to remind everyone what a death coffer is and how it works, it was released back in June of 2020 and with this update brought change to the way that the death mechanics work in old school RuneScape. No more dying at barrows and not having enough time to pick up your gear. It was done in an attempt to combat deaths resulting from disconnections and players losing items where their connection couldn't be restored before their gear despawned after dying. With this update, once a player died, their items would be kept in a gravestone which they could then collect their items from if within 15 minutes for a 1% reclamation fee based on the value of those items, or if you're a baller, you can claim it back for 76 million gold. Now, in order to top a player's coffer up, they could sacrifice any item over 10,000 gold to death's coffer for a 5% uplift on that item's value. So for a 10k item, you'd get 10.5k, basically printing money. Now, whenever new content is released, price fluctuations can be significant, so significant that the value of items can drop by 10, 20, 30, 40 or even 50%. We've had it when Lunar and Ancient Teleport tablets were changed. Previously, for the Ancient Teleport tablets, each tablet used to only be purchasable from either Bounty Hunter shops or the Last Man Standing shops, so these were hard to come by. Then, with an update back in September of 2020, players could now make these tablets themselves, flooding the game with these and the prices crashed significantly, all the way down from 15k to 5k within just a few hours. Take a look when TOA was first released, there was a lot of speculation about how good gear can be for bosses, and that hype tends to drive up prices. Just before the release, the scythe was 600 140 million gold, and one week later, a third of its value was wiped away, around 200 million. But who wants to dump 600 million gold into a coffer? Nobody. But that's not to say this was an isolated case. It happens for every piece of gear. Carol's tops dropped from 4 mil to 2.4 mil, a 40% drop. Carol's bottoms, 50%. Dragon crossbows, 20%. So how can we benefit from this? Well, due to how the Grand Exchange updates its prices, the real-time prices can be often far, far lower than the GE price. And what's tied to the GE price? Well, of course, Death's Coffer is. And when large crashes like this happen, people should be using this opportunity to top up their coffers as much as possible. Opportunities like this don't come along too often. I made full use of this when the tablet change happened, and previously when Next was released, I was tipped off that the Blood Essence Shards, which are used to double the blood runes you get gained from runecrafting, had a GE price set at 2 million gold, but I was only paying 300 to 400 thousand gold per essence, saving a massive amount of money in the long run. So what are the items now? Well, as always, there is much speculation about what the fights could look like, so it isn't immediately obvious what gear you should look out for, so pay very close attention to which gear is useful and which isn't on release, and buy up the gear which is immediately crashed to cash into your coffer. However, gear is not the only way you can capitalise on the updates. When new content is released, every man and their dog is out to farm it, and just from the basic drop table, this can cause the value of those basic drops to plummet in value. Think of the seed drops from Tombs of Amasca. On release, Snapdragons were trading at 52,000 gold per seed. Just one week later, these were down to 37,000. Almost one third of its value wiped out. Blood Essence, 250k down to 150k, a 40% drop. Torstal Seeds, 47 down to 31k, a 50% drop. Look out for the items on the new boss's drop tables and capitalise on these fluctuations by subscribe. Capitalise on these fluctuations by topping up your death's coffer because if you die as much as I do, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. One extra point to make is that, with all the speculation around what gear is good and what isn't, a lot of people tend to buy up items or consumables which they think will become useful for the bosses. And if you're one of those, and your merchants don't go your way, and ultimately end up crashing, don't fret. Just dump it into your coffer before the GE prices update, and you'll save yourself a lot of money in the long run, providing you haven't just merged a ridiculous sum or your entire bank. But that leaves me with the title of this video, 
because of the 500k death fee I've had to pay every time I've wiped a tier away, it's emptied over 100 million gold in 12 months. So it got me thinking, how much has actually been removed from the game because of the Tombs of a Masket alone? Well, looking at the death stats on the boards outside, we can see that 2.9 million people have died from entry mode, 13.4 from normal mode, and 13.1 from experts. But these are only counted as deaths from any point within the raid and not actual wipes, so the number of wipes is going to be much, much lower. This is also front loaded from release, as on release there are a far greater number of wipes then than there are now. And so if we were to calculate this based on a few crude assumptions, saying just 10% of these deaths accounted for wipes, and what the ratio of mains to irons is, as irons pay 50% less than mains accounts when they die, I'd imagine we're not far off of that 1 trillion gold mark, if we haven't exceeded it already, which is an insane amount of money. But what does that actually mean in the grand scheme of things? Is this a significant amount? Well, not really actually. Looking through a series of old tweets from back in 2019, we can see that back then around 100 billion gold entered the game through the low and high alchemy spells alone. So in the end, after months and months and months of deaths, billions upon billions of gold being removed from the game, we've collectively only removed around 10 days worth of alks. Do you think more or less has been removed because of the Tombs of a Mascot? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this as high as you thought? And make sure to subscribe to see my day one Desert Treasure 2 release guides and I'll see you then. Peace!